Okay, so we are very close to your screens. So we are going to again, once again, discuss the lesson. I hope you've gone through your questions and you tried to do the answers on your own. And that is what the learning is. Okay, now once again, and I hope you enjoyed the last time those pictures we brought for you. Pictures, the dog, golden retriever. Of course, it was a picture of a golden retriever with long hair. But all the animals, all the dogs are innocent. Okay, we'll talk about it next time. Now, we come back to some of the words that we came across in this chapter. Now, let us look at those words. Okay, um, we came across... I'll write here. We came across this word. And how is this pronounced? Not wonder. It is wandered. It is a word. See here. The difference in the pronunciation and the meaning both. And many people I find they commit this mistake of pronoun pronouncing. It is pronunciation. Okay. Now, pronunciation and pronounce is word. Pronounce. Pronounce wrong. See how this is wander, roaming, wander, roaming. The dog wandered here and there. And this is wonder. I wonder. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I wonder. I'm not able to understand. I, I, I wonder, I'm in doubt what you are. Okay, I wonder what she's doing at home. I wonder, I'm not sure, I, I don't know. I wonder, this is wonder. Okay, remember the pronunciation, difference, don't forget. Wonder, if you want, you can write wonder. He wandered here and there and this is wonder. Okay, so this pronunciation, then let us look at the other pronunciation. Okay, we saw the picture of the bear. Now let us look at the pronunciation. Okay, this is bear. Bhalu, bear. You saw the picture. Air. Okay, the sound. Air, bear. Okay, many of us, you may, may find, pronounce wrongly. Beard, beard. There was a beard. Not beard, but bear. Okay, now <clears throat> another similar pronunciation. Bear. Now meaning is different. Bear. Both of them have the same pronunciation. Bear. Okay, bear, bear. Now here, bhalu, noun, bear. Uh, I, uh, I, the walls are bear, adjective. Okay, it can be used as verb also. Means there is nothing. Okay, uh, she had nothing. Means bear. Um, that uh, her, uh, she uh, did not have anything on the wall. Bear, walls. She removed the pictures from the wall. Okay, bear. There is nothing. Everybody can see. Nothing is there. Okay, so bear. The pronunciations are similar, but the meanings are different. Now, let us again look at some other words. Beer. This is beer. Okay, E E R, beer. This is bear. This is beer. Then, beard. Again, similar pronunciation of the word, but the sound is also there. Beard, beard. Okay. Then, we come to next formula. Now, let us look at meanings of bear, bhalu, noun, bear. Uh, bear. Now, let us look at this word, bear. It's as a verb. Though the, these meanings are not there. If they have been not used the, uh, with the meanings that I am giving you, but it's good. Since we come across this word, let us learn more about these uh, how these words can be used. Born and third form is born. Okay. Sehna. I have, I bear many grudges. I bear many things. Patiently. I, I do that patiently. Patient. Sehna. Bear, born, past tense. And third form, born. Okay. Uh, third form uh, means you past participle. You, uh, we use it with past participle. I think you must have got some idea of past, present, future in your primary. Though we are going to again revise so that it comes back to you. So, I hope this is clear to you. I think these were the words 
there uh, we come across in your chapter. Now, we'll discuss the answers and I'm sure you have got them right because I know my children are very intelligent and they are going on improving and they will go on improving. So, why did the dog feel the need for a master? Clue is given in the brackets. Isn't it? Paragraph 1 and 2. Because he was fed up. Or, and you don't start the, in English. It's language. So, you don't start your answers with because. You will take the help of the question. The dog felt. It is in past tense. Why did? The question is why did? It starts with why did. That means it is in the past tense. So, the answer has to be written in past tense. Okay. So, the dog felt. Feels past tense is felt. F-E-L-T. Felt. Okay. Even if you write in present, but you, it's okay. But if you are writing answer in present, then the whole sentence should be in present. If you are writing in past, then whole answer should be in past. Remember that. That's all. If you are using past tense in your answer, then the whole thing has to be written in past about stories. Okay. But facts are not written in past. Facts means like science. Okay. Geography. They are always there. Facts. Of course, in experiments, you can use it. Depends. Okay. The dog felt the need for a master. Then paragraph 1. Uh, last slide. Because he was tired. He was sick or wandering alone. Isn't it? Looking for food. You can write the whole sentence. I'm not going to read it out. You have got the book and you have got the answer. Now, who did he first choose as his master? Now, again, this word choose. Okay. Um, choose. Chose. Past is chose. Now, since we come across, I've got one more word in my mind. I'm going to share it with you. Choose, chose and third form is chosen. Third form is chosen. So, did is there past is? So, answer will be in past. He first chose. C-H-O-S-E. Chose. Uh, whom did he choose? Uh, now, it is in the paragraph 3. Yes, you've got it right. The wolf. The. Put the. The wolf uh, as his master. Why did he leave that? Again, he left because he found who was stronger than him. The wolf uh, 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 was not that strong because he found the bear. Isn't it? He uh, left that master because leaves past tense is left. He left uh, him because he found the bear was stronger. Strong, stronger and strongest. So when you are comparing him, you will use the word stronger. Uh, the bear was stronger than. T-H-A-N. When you are comparing. See here. T-H-A-N. Then when you are comparing. And this then for time. Then. Here also many children or many, even adults get confused. Then for time. T-H-E-N. And this then means comparison. Okay. So then him. Now who did he choose next? So after the bear again you have got in paragraph 5. You from, from paragraph 5 you have to write the answer. Yes, uh, the bear, yes, uh, the bear, of course, we have already got the answer from fourth. So, here the answer will be same. And why did he serve the lion for a long time? Again, you get the answer from eighth paragraph. You have found the answer, children? Yes, you have got found. You found because here uh, you will find in eight and also just below that uh, paragraph. Okay. Uh, for a long time because it was a good life and he had nothing to complain. There was no uh, stronger beast in the forest than the lion. No one dared to touch the dog or offend him. So you can write in your own words or you can copy from here. Okay, fine. But remember the tense that you are using and stick to the tense. And who did he finally choose as his master and why? He finally chose the man. Why? Because the man was strongest. Of all, even the lion, the king of the jungle was afraid of him. So he left uh, the lion and he took the services of the man. Now children, um, so this is the reason. Okay, so here uh, the question answers are over and complete these question answers in your notebook. Now before we go on to the other exercises, 
I have something else in mind too, which I want to share with you. Uh, last time we were talking about nouns, and uh, let us once again discuss nouns. We were discussing nouns. Okay, remember in our time when we were studying grammar, we used to mug up everything means noun, definition, and they used to come in grammar. But now it is not like that. You have to understand and know the differences. Okay. So the noun, let us look at the noun. Noun is naming word. It can be a place, animal, thing. Okay. So, but remember noun, name, noun. Okay. Any word that tells us the name, noun. Okay. Now types of nouns. Uh, types of nouns. Common noun. Which is common, fan, table, boy, girl, common. It can be singular or it can be plural. Common noun. Singular, uh, boy, boys. Okay. Uh, then uh, let us look at some of the where uh, ending it has like wife. So wives. I find some people putting S with them. No. When it is, you have got F-E, then V-E-S it will change it to wives. Knife, knives, but roof, oof sound is there, so it will be roof, sir, s, sir, no b e s. Okay, then the word which has s h at the end, of e s, we add e s. Okay, then uh, uh, they, uh, the word, the common nouns which have y, then i e s. Okay, so uh, these are some of the things which I wanted to share with you in common noun. Then we come to the proper noun. What do you understand by proper noun? Proper noun means specific. When keep the name, specific name. Then it is a proper noun. Shana Thakur. Okay, Shana Thakur. Uh, Atomic Energy Central School. Proper noun. But let me share with you something. When I am writing, it can be a compound noun. When one, uh, two or three words are there and it forming a noun, it is called a compound noun. Atomic, uh, atomic, Energy Central School Name Okay, but we have so many nouns in this one name. So it is called compound noun. Touch screen. They can be they can be noun nouns or uh, verb and noun they touch screen. So verb touch and screen. They can be adjective. Email. Okay. Email. Whiteboard. Whiteboard. So all these are compound nouns. Okay. So I've got given you a new one to think about. Common noun is easy. Proper noun. Then compound noun. Then um, countable and uncountable noun. Countable of course we just discuss in uh, your uh, this common noun. Okay. Which we can count. Common nouns, we can count. Uh, they are all countable nouns. But uncountable, water, air, which we cannot count. These are uncountable nouns. Okay. So then, uh, it's clear to you. Material or material nouns. Uh, in our time, we used to have material noun, different abstract noun. But now they have uh, further classified. Countable and uncountable noun. Countable, which you can count. And uncountable, which you cannot count. All materials uh, uh, like, uh, uh, for example, wood, gold, silver, milk. You cannot count all these. So, these are uncountable nouns. Now, next, collective noun. Let us discuss collective because you have, you'll be going. Last time also we discussed collective noun. Herd, family, group, all these bunch, bouquet. All these are collective noun. A name given to a collection. Okay, it is called collective noun. This also can be singular or plural. Okay, singular, family, families. Okay, uh, families. Then committee, committees. Have this, uh, different committees. We are talking about different committees. Family, families. Okay, so herd. Herds, different herds. Okay, now another thing that was coming to my mind. Uh, now this collective noun also it depends. It can be used as singular 
or plural. Okay. Sometimes children come to me, ma'am, why waters have been written in this geography book? Why uh, peoples have been mentioned here? We have discussed people cannot be written plural. It is cannot. There are some nouns which cannot be written plural. Deer, D double E or deer, sheep. Okay, we cannot write. But fruit, F R U I T. But when we are writing plural, we are using waters, peoples. That means uh, we are trying to convey different of different countries, different places, waters of different oceans. Okay, there we can use waters. Otherwise, water we cannot use in plural. Okay, so don't get confused when you come across this word in your uh, English, uh, in your geography or elsewhere. Don't get confused. That means of different oceans, fruits of different trees, maybe. Okay, you come across in your uh, science or geography. So, otherwise fruit cannot be used in plural. It is already plural. Okay, singular or plural. It is fruit, plural. Sheep, deer, hair. Okay, now hairs also you come across. Hairs, so it means different uh, uh, types of when the writer wants to convey, then we use. I hope you have understood and uh, it, you know, uh, you are watching online and this can, is recorded also. So wherever you feel you want to revise or you want to know again or you're forgetting, you can again replay and watch it again and again. Okay. Now children, <coughs> let us look at the story and complete the fill in the blanks. Okay. Yes, children. Uh, we have come back to page number 21. Open. Have you completed? I'm sure my children have completed. I'm very sure. Yes, all enthusiastic, six standard, little children. This is the story of a bear. Bear. B-E-A-R. Bear. Not beer. But bear. Who used to be? Who used to be? Um, this is a story of a, not a bear. I'm sorry. It's not a story of a bear. It's a story of a dog. Yes. So you checked. Did you shout? I could hear your voices when I said bear. I could hear your voices. Oh, what is ma'am telling? This is not a bear. It is a story of a dog. Who used to be? Now again we have to select from here. Uh, who used to be? His own master. Yes. He decided to find a master. Stronger comparison. Stronger than anyone else. You got it. First he found, whom did he find first? A wolf. But the wolf was afraid of the bear. Here we get bear. Huh? So the first one was dog. And here the bear. It's good. Sometimes you know when teacher commits mistakes. Uh, so children also, uh, instead of becoming dull, passive, they become active. Oh ma'am, this is wrong. Okay. So in the class also you should point out, I am sure sitting, though you are sitting there, you must have got alerted and come to your senses. Oh, what is ma'am telling us? It is a story of a dog. So bear we got here. The dog thought that the bear was. Now let us look at the uh, bear was sixth. Strongest means no comparison. Okay, the strongest of all. After some time, the dog met. After some time, the dog met a lion. Oh, yes, the lion. I, I'll discuss with this word also, lion. Okay. Um, lion, after okay, lion who seemed stronger, strongest, he stayed with the lion for a long time. One day he realized that the lion was was then earth afraid of man. I got this. Now let us look at the pronunciation of lion. This is lion. It's not lion. Lion spelling is this. Okay, the clock that you wear up. You must have seen in the statues of um, uh, some old statues in the, the clock. Uh, which is worn up it is called the lion it's not a lion lion is the animal lion this is lion again now let us look another word pronunciation dairy and diary dairy diary d-a-i-r-y uh, dairy from uh, dairy of mama is be getting milk for you or uh, these poultry farms and all dairy Okay, so, but diary, 
the one I told you, I gave you in homework, in the chapter one, diary, write with a diary. Okay, that is diary. Then read and read. Both are written same, but in the same day, the spellings are same, but the pronunciations are different. Di uh, read, present tense, and past is read, and third form of, of it is also read. Now, breathe and breath, I hope you remember. Breathe. It's a verb. But when you're using the past tense, then, oh, no, I'm sorry. Breathe, verb, breathe is last. Okay, breathe is last. And breath is now. Breath. He left the breath. Okay, uh, so that is breath. This is noun. And this is verb. Breath. Okay, breath. Uh, now this can be B R E. Uh, breath that is different. Uh, the broader breath. Okay, we'll come to, we'll discuss that some other time. Then proof and prove. Look at the spelling. Proof noun. P R double O F. Proof. Give me the proof. Proof. Now this is verb. She proved the spelling. Look at the spelling and don't please uh, pay attention to these spellings and the meanings also. Proof, noun, proof. Uh, many children I find they get confused. So keep this in mind. Proof, P-R-O-O-F, proof. This is noun, proof. And this is proof, this is verb. Ooh, ooh. Both have the same pronunciation but uh, in the uh, proof this way. but the meanings are different okay i think this much is enough now we come to the next exercise that is the collective noun okay and you have been given choice have you filled it? because i heard last year children telling me in six standard they told me last year that uh, they already completed uh, this um, collective noun in fifth standard so if uh, so i'm sure you must have done this uh, completed this exercise. Now let us check the exercise. Dash of ships. So fleet. Isn't it fleet of ships? Second one. Dash of flowers. Bunch of flowers. A bouquet of flowers. Here a bunch is given. So you can write bunch of flowers. Dash of chicks. So what have you written? Brood. Isn't it brood of chicks? Fourth what have you written? Herd of cattle. We came across in the your chapter. Dash of sticks, bundle of sticks. Dash of sheep, what have you written? Sixth flock of sheep. A dash of fish, uh, seventh. Seventh uh, uh, school of fish, the collection of fish, uh, school of fish. Dash of a pack of bulls. So note this down in your notebook. In uh, same notebook after completing question answers, do these exercises because these are important children. Remember, um, these are important. You may use uh, later on also and uh, you should know the meanings. You should not forget and also whatever I have done, please don't forget. Now let us look at some noun forms that have been uh, uh, constructed. Okay, uh, from adjectives. Adjectives, remember, a word that tells more about noun or pronoun is called adjective. He is a good boy. Good. She is very creative. She is very creative. So, creative is adjective. How is she? Creative. Okay. The word which tells more about a noun, my students of ACS are very intelligent, are very hardworking. They are very hardworking. Hardworking is adjective. Now let us, and very uh, is also, uh, yes. Now let us look at, we come back to these words, okay. Uh, next time we'll take up more in detail of adjectives and adverbs. Um, honest, he's honest, so honesty. Noun form will be honesty, you'll add why. Kind, kindness. So, uh, in the headings you write not only whatever is given here. In the above exercise, in A exercise, write collective noun. Though it is not mentioned, you write under collective noun so that you don't forget. Nobody is going to ask you. But you should know, okay, this falls under collective noun. And this, uh, you can write 
nouns just nouns you can write go, don't get confused okay don't get confused because you are very young uh, abstract noun these are abstract noun but uh, uh, you can write just nouns there honest honesty kind kindness cruel cruelty uh, now uh, remember uh, uncountable nouns also they fall under uncountable nouns also uh, then calm calmness sad sadness active he is very active activity activity you will remove e the two words can be formed activeness that is also correct activeness that is not wrong activeness okay and activity both are correct creative creativity you will remove e all e's will be removed abstract nouns if you want you can write abstract noun because nowadays in the modern grammar i have not i don't come across this abstract but in my time the heading special is to be abstract noun okay sincerity uh, r e last e you will remove and i t y cheerful cheerfulness bitter bitterness sensitive sensitivity great greatness okay now you have got all these and for spellings i think you must have got them right okay now next is the quiz for you this you can do on your own see how many as uh, uh, words you find here this is a game so with uh, in the book itself you can do this then this is for fun and also for learning so this you can complete in the book do on your own and enjoy it okay there are 12 words hidden in the table six can be found horizontally and remaining six vertically okay uh, all of them are describing words like good happy etc the first letters of the words are given below so do this on your own this is for fun and for learning now next one next page there is again for you this exercise uh, this is a story given here Uh, story or a description this chapter and based on this there are some exercises so this also you do on your own in the book itself no need to do this in your notebooks so you are getting time to uh, days uh, so complete all this then let's next one and that is very important and that is the writing part okay a mouse made it now many children get confused ma'am what to write in this this is a story practice so this is in your syllabus okay whatever is here in the book exercise that means that is the syllabus and you will get questions from uh, not the same question but some other question write a story they may give outline and write a story so you should know how to write a story so when you write a story you put a heading in story writing heading is very important of course we have to stick to the outline that is been given and if you don't write according to the outline then that uh, story will become meaningless and you will not get marks you may get only for writing one mark okay if it is 10 marks mostly story writing comes for 10 marks so if you want get, to get high marks nine marks nine and a half marks then you should stick to those points now whatever is there in the question if it is there if it is not then you can imagine on your own but if you have got the points then you have to stick to those points okay so here mouse change into a girl and uh, now let me read out the question for you some points similar to you might have heard in another language divide okay we leave all that uh, we come back down below to the points a mouse made it okay mouse change into a girl by a magician wants to marry the strongest person ask whether sun or cloud stronger why but mountain stronger than clouds but mouse stronger than mountain girl asked to marry a mouse uh, becomes a mouse again now you can write in 75 words 250 words means you have got a choice you can write short story or you can write a long story now if you can story can be written either in present or in past but stick to the tense that you are using okay there is a mouse okay there is a hermit or a sage sage a uh, magician sorry sage is not given here magician there is a magician used to live all alone his name you can imagine so this is present or uh, best thing i think in stories would be uh, it becomes easier if you write in past tense so it becomes easier but if you are using dialogues okay then use inverted commas the man said the man 
I hope you can see it. The man said, or the man, the man said, inverted commas. The man continued again. Okay, uh, he responded, comma, inverted comma. So, when you are using, for said, in place of said, you can use different words. He continued, the man. Okay, sometimes you can even the man or the magician, the man, the girl. Uh, these two columns also you can use. Okay, so uh, there are different ways in which you can write the verbs of a sentence. So, uh, you, can, you have to use these words and you have to write the story. Uh, I hope you enjoy writing. There was uh, once, once upon a time... There was a musician and then you can continue. His name was Ramu. He lived all alone. But he loved children. One day, he, he saw a mouse. He took pity and changed it into a girl. Now children, when you are using uh, for uh, uh, living... For, for animals, animals and fruit and things, non-living things, you use it. Yes? For small children, infants, it. But in stories, uh, it is accepted. You can use he also. Okay? So, he thought, he took pity and he changed the mouse into a beautiful small girl. The girl, he loved the girl. He, uh, he called her by you can imagine so you continue the story and when she grew up he wanted to get her married to the strongest of all okay now you continue story and you i think maybe you have something more in mind and you will write in a better way so you think about it so i've given you so many exercises you can use utilize all these three days to complete this whole week we we'll meet on next monday okay children so so much of work, writing, grammar and question answers. Three things are there for you to complete. Okay, complete your work. Good luck. And you, uh, your supplementaries are also there. So you read the first lesson of supplementary and try to complete your question answers. We'll discuss the question answers of supplementary. So, so much work I have given to you. Okay, Ex uh, the question answers, then all these exercises in your notebooks. Up till the grammar collective noun and abstract noun. Then after that, the story writing. Story writing you can do in that thin copy I told of 100 copy pages. You can make and you write the story in that. Okay, that is the practice of story writing. Don't forget. And then after that, when you have completed all this, today is Tuesday. Isn't it? Today is Tuesday. So you're getting uh, Tuesday, then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So many days you're getting, so every day you can sit and do your exercise and then read supplementary, the first lesson, okay? And come try to do the question answers, you will enjoy it. You will enjoy that story, okay? So until we meet again, we may meet on Saturday or Monday, okay children? Good luck, complete your work and happy learning.